you just put an offer on a house, it's closing in 30 days, but in the meantime, you want to get a professional pest control company to do a wood destroying insect report, but you kind of have questions about what is a wood destroying insect report? Or if you're a pest control professional who wants some tips about how I do my wood destroying insect reports extremely quickly and extremely efficiently, so there are no questions from the buyers or sellers about what I found, this video is for you. Today, I am just finishing up a wood destroying insect report. I'm going to go through each specific pest, what I look for, what conditions I look for, and how I note it. I'm going to talk about what I don't look for, things that aren't included on a wood destroying insect report. And at the end, we're going to go over some tips for pest control professionals on how to quickly and efficiently do your wood destroying insect report. So let's go ahead and get started. This may be self-explanatory, but a lot of people don't quite understand this. This is a wood destroying insect report. Wood destroying insects limit the number of potential pests that I'm looking for from like 100 plus pests that I have to deal with as a pest control professional down to about six. The main six wood destroying insects you have to look for are termites. There are powder post beetles, there are wood boring beetles, there are carpenter ants, and there are carpenter bees. That's five, uh, I think that's all. There's a couple more really, really rare wood destroying insects, but those five are the ones you're going to see in 99% of reports. When I see signs of a wood destroying insect, when I'm doing my inspection, I take out my phone, snap a picture of it, and put it on the report. Brio Stack, my pest control software, does a really, really good job about making these reports extremely easy for me to fill out. I always do this when I get back to the office. I can fill out a wood destroying insect report in about 10 minutes with a graph, with pictures, with all the notes, thanks to BrioSec. So thank you to BrioSec for sponsoring this video. I'm going to show you one wood destroying insect I found at this customer's house. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek. This is a beautiful deck, but I found actually one carpenter bee burrow. This may not look like much. Let's get a zoom in of it. It's a small hole the size of my pinky. Even though this carpenter bee burrow is currently inactive, I have to notate it because a wood destroying insect has at one point been active or has caused damage on this person's house. Each pest I find, whether it's termites, carpenter bees, or powder post beetles, I notate as active or inactive. Now this is very important for the buyers, for the sellers, and for the pest control professionals. Whether the infestation is active or inactive determines whether a treatment is recommended. Now just because something is found doesn't mean a treatment has to be done. Sometimes it's negotiated into the price or sometimes the buyers or sellers want the pest control company to treat it. I'm going to pop up on the screen now some active wood destroying insect examples. We're going to go through them real quick. So for example, this is an active termite infestation. As you can see, <laughs> that means you have found live termites, whether that be the reproductive termites or the, just the worker termites, inside the person's house or adjacent to the structure. Sometimes that's in the crawl space, sometimes that's inside, sometimes that's on the outside perimeter. Termites, while they are not the most common, I would say the most common pest, wood destroying pest I find are carpenter bees. Termites are the most important because they can cause the most damage the quickest. The next pest I'm going to show you on the screen is an example of an active powder post beetle infestation. Powder post beetles, they are very, very small beetles. The way to know if there is an active powder post beetle infestation is to see these tiny, tiny exit holes. Out of these holes, these powder post beetles expel frass. The frass drips vertically down because of gravity and leaves little powder marks right below the holes. So if you see little holes, with powder below them, that means you have an active powder post beetle infestation. Powder post beetle infestations are not super common, but they are very important to treat. I always treat powder post beetle infestations with a product called Boracare. Boracare is the best. Wood, insecticide, fungicide for handling things like powder post beetles, wood boring beetles, and even fungus and termites. The next pest we're going to note is carpenter bees. You guys know carpenter bees, they're the big, black and yellow fuzzy bees. While they may be really important pollinators, they can also cause serious, serious damage. Active burrows need to be treated and the wood needs to be sprayed with a residual insecticide. And the last two we're going to go over really quick. Wood boring beetles and carpenter ants. These two are not super common, but the wood boring beetles, similar to the powder post beetles, the life cycle of the wood boring beetles that cause damage are just the larva stage. 
they're worms about yay big and they just burrow into the wood and carpenter ants guys carpenter ants are hardly ever actually infesting your home they're normally living outside in dead or decaying wood that has moisture content in it that's why they're called carpenter ants because they nest in wood but they don't eat or consume or nest in structurally sound wood with normal uh, low levels of moisture like your home is supposed to have. So now that we've talked about the possible wood destroying insects you may find on your wood destroying insect report or when you're doing an inspection, now we're going to talk about the next section of a wood destroying insect report, which is conditions conductive to termite infestation. That includes a few main things. One, that includes high moisture levels in the crawl space. I've got a moisture reader right here. Basically, you turn it on, you stab it into a piece of wood and the ground, and it tells you the moisture content. Apparently, the moisture content of my finger is 14%. <laughs> if you measure the moisture content in this person's crawl space and it's over 20%, we say that that is too high, and it means that it is a condition conductive to a termite infestation. One other thing that you look for is wood to ground contact. Now, not all wood to ground contact is bad. It's mostly just wood to ground contact that is actually the house and not the porch. For example, this house's siding, it's almost in contact with the ground. Let me turn you upside down here so you can see. But there is an inch or two of space. This house is good, but you may be thinking, well, I've got wood to ground contact on my house because I've got a wood front porch that's in contact with the ground, just like this. This is okay. We don't note porches with wood to ground contact. First of all, it's so, so common to have a porch with wood to ground contact. You would be having that reported on every single inspection. But second of all, wood like this, it's usually treated extremely, extremely heavily. So unless it's actual structural or siding on the house, I don't note that on my wood destroying insect report. So just to recap, we're looking for active or inactive signs of wood destroying insects like carpenter ants, carpenter bees, termites, powder post beetles, and wood boring beetles. And we're looking for any conditions conductive to termite infestation. Now, why wouldn't you look for conditions conductive to other wood destroying insects like conditions conductive to carpenter bees or powder post beetles? Well, it's because termites, frankly, are the most important. Now we're going to go through what a wood destroying insect report does not entail. So it does not entail how much damage is caused by these pests. I don't go in, I'm not a structural engineer. I don't go in and say, oh, these termites have caused X dollars worth of damage, or oh, the carpenter bees have completely destroyed this four x four, we need to replace this. I just note what I found and if the infestation is active or not. I also don't note anything that is hidden. So there is always a chance of hidden powder post beetle infestations, hidden termites, hidden carpenter bees. If I can't see it with a flashlight on the ground doing a normal inspection, then I don't note it. Say for example, if there's a bed in the room that's covering signs of termites, that's not just my opinion, that is clearly outlined in every wood destroying insect report. If it's not readily accessible, visible damage or infestation, then it's not the job of the pest control professional to get in there and really like tear apart the house. We don't do that. Finally, I'm a pest control guy. I handle all kinds of pests. As we talked about, there's only about six that I will note on a wood destroying insect report. I don't note things like mice. While I may argue personally that mice can cause more damage than something like a wood boring beetle, I don't note that it's not technically a wood destroying pest, even though mice and rats can gnaw through wood. It's just how it is. Uh, maybe they'll change that one day, but I don't note any other infestation I don't note wasp infestations. I don't note if I see bed bugs, cockroaches, wasps, spiders, mice, rats. None of that stuff goes on there except wood destroying insects. Finally, the last thing I don't note on the report is my opinion. I don't say like, oh, it looks like these termites have been here for 50 years. If the buyers or sellers ask me my opinion, I'm more than happy to give it to them but I don't note it on the report. The report is simply facts about what I found. Finally, really quick, the last portion of this video I wanted to go over with, all those pest control professionals who are out there watching me, or maybe you're just like a, a home inspector and you want to get your pest control license, or maybe you're a pest control professional and just want some tips. I have two extremely, extremely helpful tips for you that I wanted to share with you today. First, be thorough, take pictures, use your moisture reader, get a detailed graph of the house from, from the satellite view or with your measurer in person. Normally what I do is I take my roll, my measuring tape in person and get 
a couple of rough estimates and then use the satellite image to confirm all of my measurements. Finally, get the signature of the buyer. The buyer is the one who requests the wood destroying insect report to be done. The seller doesn't care if the house is infested with termites. As long as you're signing the check, they're just trying to get out of there. It's always the buyer who's paying for the service, the buyer's realtor or home inspection company who is scheduling with you, the termite professional. So it's very important to have good communication with the buyer, get their signature, get their approval, get a payment. Second tip for pest control professionals, when you're doing these treatments, quote them if they're interested for the service. If you do the inspection for the buyer and you say, this house needs a thousand dollar termite treatment, the buyer is going to use that leverage to negotiate a price with the seller. The seller's not gonna be super happy, but the buyer's gonna say, hey, this needs to be done. And a lot of times the seller or the buyer will use you, if you did the wood destroying insect report, to do the treatment. So that's why I personally don't charge as much as I could for wood destroying insect reports because 90% of the time, if I'm finding an active infestation, the buyer or seller are going to use me to get it done. And that's secondary income that is accounted for in the initial inspection. So that's just a pro tip in my opinion. That's the end of this video, guys. I hope you learned something about wood destroying insect reports and what they mean if you're a buyer, if you're a seller, or if you're in the pest control industry or if you're a realtor, or if you're a home inspector. We all kind of work together to make this home sale happen. The pest control inspection is just a very, very small part. So thank you so very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you again very, very soon. I love loud trucks, guys. One of these days, I'm gonna get on my pest control truck, biggest muffler possible, so everyone hates me.